This week, we have a full moon in Gemini, and Mercury, the messenger planet, is moving into Capricorn and preparing for his retrograde motion that's coming up soon. All of this, an empowered moment and more, coming up in my new Intuitive Astrology Empowered Moments video for the week of Monday, November 27th through Sunday, December 3rd. Stay tuned. This is Colleen Lemma, Starseed Astrologer and Spiritual Messenger from Sacred Soul Empowerment, here to do our weekly video for November 27th through December 3rd. It's going to be a powerful week because we start out with a full moon in Gemini. For this week's weekly reading, we're going to be using the Tarot of Dreams Tarot deck by Ciro Marchetti. That's going to be the main message for the collective. And then your special message card this week, depending on your stone of choice, it's going to be coming from the Goddesses, Gods, and Guardians deck. This is by Sophie Bashford. I think we used this deck recently, and I kept asking Spirit and the Guides if we should be using a different deck, and they were very adamant that we needed to use this deck this week. So we're going to see what comes out later on. Before we get into the astrology of the week, or even looking at your stones of choice, let's go ahead and do an empowered moment. So let's take a deep breath and close your eyes, relax your body, clear your mind of all thoughts. Focus on the present moment, the here and now, and visualize in your mind's eye that you're surrounded with beautiful golden white light. This is the golden white light of guidance and protection the golden white light of source God energy. And let's take in a deep breath with intention and breathe in that golden white light into every cell of our bodies. As you exhale, letting your body relax and releasing all that your body, mind, and soul no longer needs. Imagine now a grounding cord coming out of your root chakra and traveling down through the layers of Earth Mother Gaia till it reaches the center of the Earth, her crystalline heart chakra. And imagine or sense, see or feel that your grounding cord is connecting to Earth Mother Gaia's heart chakra. Perhaps she's helping you connect that cord or you're just in your mind reaching out with your energy and connecting that to her crystalline heart chakra, her grounding, nurturing energy in the center of the earth. And now take in a deep breath and imagine you're breathing in Earth Mother Gaia's grounding, nurturing energy all the way up that grounding cord until it reaches your root chakra. And then as you exhale, it's being dispersed throughout all of your chakras and energy bodies. So we have a mingling of as above and so below, masculine and the feminine, the guiding and the nurturing energies from source and Gaia. And focus your attention now on the energy, the idea that we're having a full moon in Gemini and full moons are about completion and endings and releasing and healing. It's very powerful energy that builds up as we near the full moon and this full moon is in Gemini, a sign that rules the mental body, the mental realm and thoughts, perceptions, ideas, information, messages, and communications. So we know that communication and interaction with others and receiving and giving information is going to be important this week. So let's balance our energies, balancing our mind 
and even balancing our emotions and emotional body as the moon does rule our feelings. And let's ask our angels and guides to provide us with the answers that we seek, the information that we need, the guidance that we ask for, and asking that all of our interactions, communications with others, and even within ourselves is balanced and kind and compassionate, calm and grounded. And also visualize in your mind's eye a nature scene. They're guiding us to nature right now. Seeing yourself either in the mountains, next to a stream, a lake, the forest, a meadow, anywhere where there's nature and see yourself communing with the grass, the flowers, the trees, the animals. Standing with your feet on the ground as the ground will provide us with stability and security during this vacillating, powerful Gemini full moon. Let's breathe in that image into every cell of our bodies, asking for grounding, centeredness, stability, as we move throughout this week with the full moon in Gemini. And as you're taking your last deep breath and when you feel that it's time to return to this time and place and space, you can open your eyes and come back. And let's go ahead and take a look at your stones of choice. Okay, so these are special intention pendants, which by the way, if you don't receive my newsletter, my monthly newsletter, we've got a discount going on as we're nearing the holidays on all of the special intention pendants that you could look at and possibly purchase that are on my website. This right here is a beautiful sunshine aura quartz and purple aura quartz combination. And I decided that Gemini, Gemini to me, it deals with, you know, nature and um, vitality and silliness and fun and just kind of a multitude of directions and energies. So I felt like I was gonna choose these pendants that displayed different and various colors. So Sunshine Aura Quartz, this is for the solar plexus chakra and the Purple Aura Quartz is for the crown chakra. It's wrapped in gold wire. It's Reiki charged with the vibration of the number eight, number of owning one's personal power and authority, and master number 33, number of Christ consciousness and master teacher energies. The sign of Sagittarius for joy, positivity, and optimism. The sign Aquarius for the ability to vocally transmit higher information and knowledge. Pluto planet that will assist in transmuting and releasing deeply held blockages to one's inner power, Uranus for the connection to the God mind and other dimensions of time and space, the activation and balancing of the solar plexus chakra for leadership and take charge abilities, and the activation and balancing of the crown chakra to open up to clear cognizance and channeling abilities, the energy of Archangel Michael to protect, pull cords, guide, and provide us with confidence to move forward on our path, and Archangel Raziel for alchemy and magic, Archangel Metatron as well to connect to one's Akashic record. So this is jam pack full of lots of energies. All right, let's put that one down. And then we're going to look at this one. I hope the light gets it properly because this, oh yeah, that's peacock ore. And there's different colors within this. The indigo blue and the purple is pretty prominent here in this peacock stone. I think there's yellow on the back too. 
So this is wrapped in gold wire and Reiki charge with the vibration of the number three. Number of joy, happiness, creativity, and expansion. And master number 11, number of the light worker and the visionary. The energies of Sagittarius, sign of inspiration, freedom, enthusiasm, and adventure. The planet Jupiter to expand one's vision into new and beautiful horizons. The opening and balancing of the solar plexus chakra, heart chakra, and throat chakra for confidence, empowerment, unconditional love of self and others, and speaking one's truth in a compassionate and authentic way. The energies of Archangel Jophiel, Archangel of seeing the beauty in everything and in every moment, and Goddess Lakshmi to help lead one in a positive direction towards infinite blessings and in various forms of abundance. And then our last stone of choice, this is a different type of aura quartz. Remember that first one was the yellow and purple. This one is the green and purple. So we've got the apple aura quartz for the heart chakra, the purple aura quartz for the crown chakra. This is wrapped, this one's wrapped in silver wire actually. And it's Reiki charge with the vibration of the number nine, number of unconditional love, compassion, and forgiveness. And master number 33, number of Christ consciousness and master teacher energies. The sign Pisces for connection to the universe and past lives. The sign Aquarius for the ability to vocally transmit higher information and knowledge. The energies of the South Node and the North Node to assist with severing ties to the past and opening new doors to the future, especially in regards to relationship matters. Uranus for connection to the God mind and other dimensions of time and space, the activation and balancing of the heart chakra for healing the emotional body and opening up to unconditional love, the activation and balancing of the crown chakra to open up to claircognizance and channeling abilities, energies of Archangel Raphael to heal old pain, traumas, and soulmate relationships, energies of Archangel Raziel for our alchemy and magic, and Archangel Metatron to connect with one's Akashic records. So these have a lot of energies in them, and more than some of my other pendants do. We've got the, um, what is it called again? The, yeah, I should have known that. Sunshine Aura and Purple Aura Quartz is the first one. And then we've got the Peacock Ore for the second one. And then we've got the Apple Aura Quartz with the Purple Aura Quartz for the third one. So you can think about those as we talk about the astrology for the week. So we start right out with the full moon at four degrees of Gemini. So anybody that has uh, Gemini, Sagittarius, Pisces, Virgo planets, especially between, let's say, zero degrees up to about 10 degrees, um, you're going to be highly affected by this full moon. Now, full moons are always powerful energies, right? And the moon rules our emotions and the emotional body, but Gemini rules the mind and the mental body. So this one is definitely combining both our um, logic and our intuition at the same time. It's challenged because it's going to be in a challenging connection to both Saturn and Mars. It squares Saturn, which is the ruler of karmic lessons and the planet that rules restrictions, limitations, and delays. And then it's opposing Mars, which is in Sagittarius right now, newly in Sagittarius from just this past week. And Mars is the warrior planet. So he rules energy, action, and forward movement, but also can rule frustration and aggression and a, a overly assertive energy. It can be positive assertive energy too. But with the full moon kind of ramping up our emotions and then that connection with Saturn and Mars, we might feel a little challenged um, at the beginning of the week. And if you're watching this early, even the previous weekend as it's building up. Also on Monday the 27th, we have Mercury, ruler of the mental realm, rules our thoughts, ideas, communications, perceptions. It's in Sagittarius still at this point, which is a good and inspirational, optimistic place for Mercury, ruler of the mind, to be. But it's challenging Neptune. It's in a square connection to Neptune. And Neptune, it can rule miracles and magic and 
and spiritual inspiration and all of that, but it's a challenging aspect. So we have to look at the shadow side of Neptune, which is illusion, delusion, and confusion, lack of boundaries. And so I just feel that as we're communicating with other people, because we're talking about Mercury, there might be some misunderstandings or miscommunications. There might be some fuzzy headedness going on within our own minds. We might feel a little loopy, I guess you could say. We could feel ungrounded. We could feel confused. Um, this, you know, it's a possible that we can have a creative and intuitive energy with it, but we might second guess ourselves or we might be unsure about the information we're receiving because again, this is a challenging connection between Mercury and Neptune. So just be aware. Um, and at the same time, I will say that Mercury is already in its shadow preparing for a retrograde motion, which doesn't happen this week, but it's already slowing down. And as it's in its shadow, there can already be miscommunication, misinformation, you know, lack of clarity going on and that connection to Neptune is just going to heighten that. On Wednesday the 29th the Sun in Sagittarius is in conjunct Jupiter and Taurus. Now the Sun rules our sense of self, self-expression, self-identity, how we shine our light. It's an optimistic inspirational Sagittarius but the in conjunct is a difficult aspect, a difficult connection and Jupiter, which is what it's in conjunct to, Jupiter rules the expansion principle, exaggeration, making things bigger than they need to be. And in this case, with the sun in Sagittarius, Sagittarius is a mutable fire sign. So it's very changeable, passionate, but sometimes all over the place and not grounded. Jupiter could expand and exaggerate that feeling for us. Now, Jupiter is also about our belief systems, and actually, Jupiter is the ruling planet of Sagittarius, which is where the sun is. So there's definitely going to be some challenges, perhaps, with how we're perceiving something, thinking about something, believing or a lack of believing in something or ourselves. Um, our whole kind of perception might be off a little bit. We might need to shift our perspe perceptions or perspectives. We might need to shift our belief systems because Jupiter rules our belief systems. So that might be kind of a funky energy as well. And then on Thursday the 30th, we've got Venus, the planet that rules love and relationships, also rules uh, personal resources like money and finances. But she's in Libra right now, which is the partnership sign of balance and harmony. And she, on Thursday, is in conjunct Neptune. So now we're back to this Neptune, illusion, delusion, confusion, lack of boundaries. I don't know which way is up. I don't know what I should be doing. I don't know how to look at my relationship because that's what Venus is about. Venus is about all kinds of relationship connections, friendship, family, romantic, career, and business. So that in conjunct to Neptune just might have us second guessing ourselves or being unsure maybe there's a lack of boundaries a lack of balance and harmony in our relationships uh, maybe not equal give and take we're questioning things you know we're just unsure and so so far we've got kind of some challenging energies that are coming along here this week then we move into friday which is the first of december this is when Mercury, the messenger, moves into Capricorn. As I said, it's already been in its shadow, I think, since the 25th. So just a couple of days previous to the start of this week, Mercury went into its shadow. And, uh, you know, personally, I have to say, I felt like I was feeling Mercury in its shadow, miscommunication and misunderstandings, even before November 25th. Uh, 25th. So, you know, you can give me a shout out if you feel the same way. But technically, it went into its shadow on November 25th. And it's going to be in Capricorn for two different periods of time because of the retrograde motion, because the retrograde motion brings it back into Sagittarius from Capricorn. But as it is, Mercury is going to be in Capricorn until December 23rd. And then, as I said, by that time, it's retrograding back into Sagittarius. And then once Mercury goes back to direct motion, which is January 
first, I believe. Maybe I'm wrong. But anyway, it goes back into Capricorn on January 13th and stays there until February 2nd. So we've got two separate time periods of Mercury and Capricorn. And Capricorn rules um, our life purpose, our life path, our career, our goals, status, respect, recognition with who we are out in the world, working hard towards what it is we want to accomplish. And so Mercury in Capricorn is usually pretty grounded. You know, it's, it's a grounded earth sign, Capricorn. But with the retrograde motion coming up, with Mercury slowing down and then going retrograde, we're going to be having maybe to redo things, revise things, reevaluate things when it comes to life purpose, life path, career. And when I say life purpose, life direction, it's not just like career, job, who we are out in the world, but it's also from a soul perspective. What is your soul's life purpose, which can include a whole array of other things, right? It can include what is your soul here to learn? What is going on in your relationships? What's going on in your family? What's going on in, in both business and finances? What's going on in living situation? You know, to me, that life purpose, life direction kind of extends out uh, to other things. So let's see, on Sunday, the 3rd of December to end this week, we've got Venus in Libra, still in Libra at this point. However, I believe it's Monday the 4th for next week's reading that she's finally going to move out of um, partnership sign Libra and move into Scorpio. But on the 3rd, she's still in Libra and she's challenging Pluto, which is the planet of power and control, death and rebirth, transformation and regeneration. Squaring Pluto is a challenging connection, a challenging aspect. So there might be power and control issues in relationships, um, where again, we want balance and harmony with Venus and Libra, but Pluto comes in with that powerful, intense energy and kind of knocks us for a loop, so to speak. Also on Sunday the 3rd, we have Mars the warrior planet in Sagittarius and it's in conjunct Jupiter. So earlier in the week, we had the sun in Sagittarius in conjunct Jupiter, planet of exaggeration, expansion, belief systems, um, higher perceptions, looking at the big picture, expanding into new horizons. Now at the end of the week, Sunday the 3rd, we have Mars the warrior, the planet that likes to move forward, energy and action and forward movement is in conjunct Jupiter. So I feel like, you know, what comes in is like we haphazardly are trying to expand ourselves and do things, but Jupiter will, with that in conjunct, bring in some difficult energies to where there might be um, some things blown out of proportion. There might be, um, it's like too much energy. You know, Mars and Sagittarius and Sagittarius is fire energy. It's passionate. Mars is passionate here and wants to really put his energy into moving forward. But that in conjunct to Jupiter, I just feel like maybe it has us topsy-turvy, upside down, sideways, and just you know, when it comes to, again, our perceptions, perspectives, and belief systems, we might just kind of be all over the place. So this feels like it may be a little bit of a challenging week. Of course, you know, we are going to be entering December and nearing the holidays, and there's family stuff going on and shopping going on and preparations going on. So that might be part of this kind of confusing energy or challenging energy that we see, not to mention the full moon in Gemini that starts out the week. So let's go ahead and take a look at the messages from our angels and guides and see what's going on here. All right, so the first card is a powerful Major Arcana 16, and it's the Tower card, and it is ruled by Mars. So Mars, the warrior, planet of energy, action, forward movement, the planet that is reactive, right? Mars is kind of this warrior, masculine, reactive sort of energy. It can be anger, assertion, aggression. It can act before it thinks. Now, the Tower card is usually about some sort of big external change or changes that are upcoming and going on. Got the lightning bolt coming here out of the sky, kind of a 
you know, what comes into mind is like this imminent warning, you know, with this lightning bolt. And I don't want to sound all catastrophic or anything, because in fact, this particular tower in this particular deck is lit up by these rays of light. So it makes me feel, I'm glad I used this deck, because it makes me feel like whatever the tower is bringing, whatever changes and redirections and rug being pulled out from under you, surprises, aha moments, I do feel like it's connected with the full moon, which is in that challenging aspect to Saturn, which can bring like frustrations and delays, but also opposing Mars, which can bring <clears throat> this heightened emotional communicative, you know, sort of energy going on. Now, again, the rays of light are shining down on the tower. So I feel like whatever this is, it could be good redirections and good changes, good revelations, um, good surprises, maybe, but it is the tower. So maybe we can also say that through the challenges, in retrospect, we'll see that it's really a good thing. So it might not be that while we're going through or introduced to whatever these changes and tower card energies are about, we might not be jumping up and down for joy, but we may, in fact, a few days, a few weeks, maybe even a few months after, we might look back and say, oh, okay, well, I can see the benefits, the blessings, the positive of why this occurred. So let's go ahead and take a look at the second card. Okay, not surprised to see the moon, the moon card here. This is Major Arcana 18, the moon, and we do have a full moon. And the moon card itself can bring heightened intuition. You know, our psychic senses are magnified. In fact, it's ruled by Pisces. And Pisces is one of those water signs of the zodiac that is very intuitive, that is very psychic, that's connected to past lives and <clears throat> excuse me, maybe even past life karma. So here with this full moon, we might be introduced with that challenging square to Saturn, the karmic, uh, karmic planet or ruler of karmic lessons. We might be introduced some, to some past life energies that are coming up, our dreams. The moon, t uh, the moon card often means that our dreams are more active and maybe we're having purging healing dreams. Maybe we're having some prophetic dreams going on, especially with that um, being ruled by Pisces, right? Pisces is very prophetic, very clairvoyant. We might be given some clarity. So through it would be a great time to do meditation, self-reflection, guided visualization or meditation work because we've got this clear kind of perspective or clear reflection of energies. So here we we're surrounded by kind of like the shadows and here's the water, which is our emotions kind of coming up. But here in the middle, we've got this clarity, um, crystal clear clarity. We've got some birds here in the background and birds are messengers. So we're gonna be receiving some intuitive psychic messages and not just from our angels and guides or from the cosmos or the spirit realm, but also pay attention to communications with others, information that's coming to others, uh, real-time stuff, like even going on the internet, watching videos, reading articles or other information, listening to other people communicate and talk might be um, full of some juicy information and guidance um, and they're saying serendipity, serendipitous happenings, and what we might call coincidences. Um, you might want to pay attention to all of that information that's coming in. But again, that square from Mercury to Neptune kind of brings us into that confusion realm, right? So we might be saying, am I really seeing this? Am I really hearing this message correctly? Is this really true guidance? Um, you know, so just be aware of that um, as well. I feel like we can have some crystal clarity. Maybe that comes a little bit later on throughout the week, or maybe it comes later on after Mercury retrograde is over with. But eventually, we're going to be seeing things for what they are and having some crystal clear clarity on something. We even have a bat here. You know, this to me are birds in the in the uh, circle in the middle, the lens in the middle. But we've got a bat here, and bats are about transformation um, and maybe transmutation. So transmuting old emotions, old 
thoughts and perceptions and um, moving through a process of transformation. So, so far we've got two major arcana cards, very important weak energy. Let's take a look at the last card and see what that has to say. Okay, so we have another major arcana. So this is a very important week when it comes to our soul's growth and evolution. Whenever we have a lot of major arcana cards in a reading, it's, you know, about the soul's evolutionary path. You know, the healing that we're going through, the path that we're on, what we're learning along the way, paying attention to these big spiritual, like, concepts, if you will. Now, the lover's card is ruled by Gemini. That's what our full moon is in. Isn't that interesting? We've got moon, and then we've got lover's Gemini. But, of course, we often think of the lover's card as ruling relationship matters. And this is definitely one thing that we can say is that with Venus in Libra, the partnership sign of Libra, and she's finishing up her travels through Libra this week. Because again, the beginning of next week, she's going to be moving into Scorpio. And Venus, as the ruler of Libra, it's all about balance and harmony and equality and all kinds of relationships, right? It's, it's kind of like, this is like the lesson at this time with Venus, the planet of relationship, is to focus on, is there a lack of equality and balance in these different kinds of relationships? So here with Venus connecting with Neptune, and then later on the week, she's connecting with Pluto. Those are both very heavy duty planets, uh, spiritual planets, transformational planets, to where there's going to be something that we need to really pay attention to. Now, Gemini is a sign of vacillation. Um, you know, it's the sign of the twin. So it's like either or, this way or that way, this choice, that choice, that decision, this decision. And it vacillates back and forth and sometimes has a hard time making up its mind which direction or what decision uh, it needs to make and, and go through. So the other thing that the lovers is about is about choices. Again, you know, Gemini, the twins, this way or that way. So when it comes to like paths, again, if it's about relationships, it may very well be about relationships. But if you don't have a relationship thing going on in your life, it's about this path versus that path, this choice versus that choice and decisions, making a decision. And again, Gemini has a little bit of a difficult time sometimes because it vacillates. So Mercury is in its shadow. It is going to be going retrograde soon. If you can at all wait to make a very important decision until after Mercury retrograde is over and turns back to direct motion, which isn't going to be until sometime in January, then I would suggest in doing that. If you must make a decision or a choice before that time, you just need to really write down, weigh all the options, research everything about both possibilities, um, and meditate on it, you know, try to meditate on it and ask for clarity on to which way is the best way for you. Okay. All right. Wow. So very important, um, energies for the week with those major arcana. Let's go ahead and see what special message card you have. A message for you depending on your stone of choice so the first stone of choice was the sunshine aura with the purple aura combination quartz sunshine aura and purple aura special message of guidance for those people for this week this one's calling my attention right here in the middle and it says dryad protect your energy well the sunshine aura relates to the solar plexus chakra, and it is our center of personal power, confidence, and courage. It is about protection, protecting your energy, protecting your aura, protecting your um, projects, protecting your vision, you know, protecting this can relate to other things and not just protecting your own energy. So you want to protect the information you have. In other words, feels like you're not supposed to share too much information with other people right now until it's like solid and grounded and for sure, right? It's like, okay, just hold on to that. Continue to, you know, think about it, meditate on it, research the information and protect that 
whether it be a business project or a decision you have to make and you're you know trying to figure it out or whatever it might be or again protecting your own boundaries and protecting your own energies um, this is definitely about protection and i'm looking at the image here I want to even say there's some green here in her dress, protect your heart, right? There might be some sensitivities going on. Maybe there is some relationship stuff going on and you want to protect yourself from lower vibrational energy or anger or whatever. Put that shield around you. Call in Archangel Michael to pull cords when need be. Um, she's sitting kind of within a void, right? And to me, it looks like in the background, there's this void of energy. She's got this kind of little protective fairy energies all around her so call in those guides call in those fairies call in the um ascended masters whoever it is your ancestors that can provide this kind of protection and surrounding you with light and leading you in the right direction but the void behind her makes me feel like you know that she might be making a choice or decision to jump into something new, to jump onto a new life path. And that's kind of what the void is. The void is full of potential and possibilities, right? Perhaps, perhaps your life is on a particular kind of uh, direction right now, um, or you've been in a certain situation or circumstance for quite some time. You might be thinking, you know what? I just want a clean slate and I want to start anew. Now, it is a full moon and not a new moon. So again, with Mercury retrograde as well, you might want to wait until the beginning of the year and the new moon and Mercury goes direct um, to jump into that, that new potential, to jump into that new opportunity, to go into the void and take a leap of faith, um, if that's indeed what you're thinking about doing. And until then, again, protect your energy and protect um, the information, the bits of information that you're gathering along the way. All right, let's take a look at the message for the peacock or people. So special message for the week for peacock or peacock or people. Okay, this one wants to come out. So I'm just going to pull it out. Leah, stand your ground. Well, if that's not about personal power, I don't know what it is. You got to stand in your truth and stand your ground. And again, it reminds me of the Venus uh, squaring Pluto towards the end of the week, which is building all week, especially since we begin the week with a full moon. So the energy is already pretty heightened. And you want to stand in your personal power. You don't want to be in a disempowering situation or circumstance. And don't disempower yourself and don't play small. Look at how confident she is. She's standing confidently. She's got her, her kind of her magic wand there. She's got magical energies all around her. Her intuition is magnified and heightened. This reminds me of water. Um, sometimes when I see waves of water, I feel like there's uh, emotional uncertainty or emotional kind of reactions, but she looks very kind of happy, positive, and strong. So I want to say this is waves of intuition and waves of guidance from spirit here up at the top that's coming in. And with all of this, she's feeling more empowered, right? The information's coming in, the guidance is coming in, um, her guides are there, and she's just feeling much more empowered than maybe she has in the past. She's ready to kind of stand in her truth and maybe even speak her truth in such a way. So this is um, a very positive message for you all. And I'm kind of looking that, you know, it looks like she's got you know, no clothes on except for maybe underneath the water, probably, right? Like a bathing suit. But, you know, it's like um, being, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, vulnerable. It's like she might be being vulnerable by speaking her truth and standing her ground, but she's confident that this is the choice for her. This is the way for her to go. And it's going to turn out good. You know, it might be challenging through it, but I feel like it's going to turn out good in the end. And then for those of you that chose the Apple Aura and Purple Aura Quartz, Apple Aura and Purple Aura Quartz message for the week. 
This one's calling my attention right here. This one, now I believe you pronounce it Hell, H-E-L. I could be wrong. And this says end of a cycle. Well, Pluto often can bring end of a cycle. Full moons are completion, releasing, letting go can be an end of a cycle. So it seems like for the apple aura and purple aura people, you're in a completion phase, right? You're, it's time to release and let go of what you no longer need to carry, what you no longer need to hold on to, what you're no longer aligned with. The universe is coming in to assist you in clearing that away. We've got this kind of blackbird, crow. I don't know what kind of blackbird that is, but to me, it's like death and rebirth, transformation and change, messages that are coming in. Um, some of this could be shadow side stuff, but the messages are powerful. As you're working through your own shadow, your own fears, your own anxieties, the messages are coming in very powerfully for you and you're able to transmute and rise above some of these lower energies or situations or circumstances and again it's time for a death and rebirth and a huge change that's going to bring you into a new cycle right so since we have a full moon this week that means in two weeks we'll have a new moon and you know i'm not saying that the transformation from the old to the new is going to be all in that two week time period or in, in two weeks that that's when it all occurs. But I feel like the initiation of it does or you know, the beginning of it does, you'll start to see um, some new things kind of coming in. Um, she's got one eye closed and one eye opened. Okay. So that might mean that there's certain things that we see that are transpiring, unfolding and occurring. And then there's certain things that we just don't see yet that we have to trust and have faith and surrender to the divine plan and to divine the divine timing of the divine plan unfolding. It doesn't mean that you don't move forward because part of it is again this learning about trust and faith in the universe, but you see, at least with one eye here, you see what the truth is. You see that it's the end of a cycle and that it's time to move on. It's time to transition, to change, to move on, either moving figuratively or literally in some way, shape, or form. Okay. All right, everybody. So thank you so much for tuning in to this weekly intuitive reading and sending you all lots of love and light and many, many blessings until I see you. Don't forget, December will be a new monthly intuitive reading. So be on the lookout if it's not already up, the December monthly reading, as well as I'll see you next week. Love and light, everyone. Namaste.